In more recent years, Chinese cities have become associated with smog and other forms of pollution like developed countries that industrialized before it. But this is only part of the story. In China, you'll also find 10% of the world's arable land, which in turn supports 20% of the global population. In fact, nestled between its mountains, rivers, deserts, tropical rainforests, and huge swathes of grassland, you have one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. I'm James Chow, host of The China Current. The UN says China is home to 14% of all animal species and 10% of all plant species. Among these plants is bamboo, an incredibly useful member of the grass family that keeps our ecosystem going, providing food for animals and humans alike, and growing quickly, one and a half inches an hour, or 36 inches tall in just one day. This plentiful supply ensures a renewable alternative to harmful plastics and other material like steel and aluminium. Through history, different Asian cultures have used bamboo for fuel, cooking utensils, and even writing pens, while everywhere you can find it in the clothes we wear, such as bamboo yarn mixed with rayon and spandex. But in terms of the public imagination, nothing says bamboo more than the panda that live in the mountains of southwest China, where they consume up to 84 pounds of bamboo a day. The logo for the Worldwide Fund for Nature was inspired by Titi, a giant panda born in Sichuan who moved to London Zoo in 1958. The organization says pandas are so important in their natural habitat because they protect other species around them, from the golden monkey to the multicolored pheasant. Thus, bamboo, on which pandas almost completely subsist, are critical to the survival of our ecology. In Hong Kong, where I live, bamboo can be found wrapped around buildings because its unique strength-to-weight ratio makes it perfect for scaffolding and for climbing up. By far, China is home to the largest variety of bamboo species. Almost all of these native, rather than introduced or invasive species found in other countries. Resources are focused in 10 provinces, of which Zhejiang, Fujian, Jiangxi, and Hunan account for an amazing 60% of bamboo forests in China. It's become so entwined with the way we live that bamboo, once dismissed for being affordable and plentiful, sits at the heart of the Chinese culture, not only the panda, but especially in the performing arts. Traditional instruments, including the Tsinghu, an early prototype for the violin, is the instrument you'll hear carrying the melody in Peking Opera, or bamboo flutes and panpipes that date to 12th century China, giving way to many more varieties found today in Latin America, Africa, and Southeast Asia. Even the harp, endemic to ancient Greece, when it was used to accompany lyric poetry, was crafted from a type of bamboo. There is a feel for bamboo in China, be it music, literature, or the future of our planet. Kunming, the provincial capital of Yunnan, will host world experts for the UN Biodiversity Conference, the first part to be held virtually in October 2021, and the second part in person starting April 2022. Bamboo helps balance oxygen and CO2 in the Earth's atmosphere that helps contain levels of warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Thus, it could be a game changer, not only for the plants and animals that need it to subsist, but for the very survival of humanity. I'll follow what happens in Kunming as the world comes together to act. James Chow, you're watching The China Current. Follow us on social media at The China Current.